Well, hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and demonstrate a patient assessment of the trauma patient. So I'm going to show you my systematic approach, which is really exactly the same as the approach that we've taught you in our assessment lectures and that you'll be practicing throughout the semester. So a big thing to remember is that your assessment starts before you even touch the patient. So I'm out here on a nice warm afternoon. Um, I'm comfortable in a t-shirt. I'm not too worried about hypothermic sort of uh, conditions for my patient and I want to know what's going on. So I'm part of a search and rescue team today. Uh, we've been called out for an injured hiker uh, just off the trail up to T Tram Tower 1 and he needs assistance. So I don't really know much about the mechanism of injury. I know that it was enough to hurt his ankle so I'm going to put it right in the back of my mind to consider whether or not I need to protect his C-spine. I also want to find out if we know there's more than one patient and I want to ensure that I have enough equipment to protect myself in the environment and to protect myself from the patient in case there's any blood or other body substances. So once I have all of that prepared, I'm going to go ahead and go into the field. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I hurt my ankle. I was walking around in these dress shoes out here in the wilderness. And I hurt my ankle. All right, sir. Well, my name's Hello. Dane. I'm a Hi. wilderness first responder. Um, right. Do you mind if I help you out today? I hear that's some good training. No, let's let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm part yeah. of the search and rescue team oh, here. So, God. so can you tell me exactly what happened? Yeah, I was coming down these boulders, and I, you know, this sandias had these ball bearing granite slippery stuff, and man, I got these dress shoes on, and I slipped. Look at them. They're like slippers. So already, I can make a few assessment points without putting my hands on the patient. He's able to talk to me, he can make full sentences, so I know that his airway is open and that he's breathing okay. He's told me that he fell while walking, so I'm not immediately concerned about his C-spine, but I'm going to ask him if his neck hurts. Sir, does your neck hurt at all when no, you fell? No, no, I, I kind of slipped and I caught myself with my ankle. Okay, so not you're, my neck. Not so my you're neck. pretty sure no, no. it's just your ankle that yeah, hurts? Yeah, I can move my head, it's alright. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the next thing I'm going to do is just put my hands on his wrist and feel for a radial pulse. Sir, I'm just going to feel for your pulse. Your hands are cold, alright. And I'm getting a rough idea about how fast or slow I think the pulse is, whether it's strong and whether it's regular. So far I can tell that it's strong, it's regular. The other thing I want to do is assess for disability. So I'm going to ask him uh, my basic A and O question. So sir, I'm going to ask you some, so what might seem to be a little silly questions, but All right. um, can you tell me your full name? Jason Williams. And do you know where you are today? Yeah, I'm uh, up by the tram. I can. Okay, and what day of the week is it? It's, uh, it's Thursday. Okay, and he already explained to me what happened just before the injury. So now I've worked through my A, B, C, D, and I'm now onto my E. That's going to be environment and exposed. In this situation, I already mentioned, it's pretty warm out. I'm comfortable in just my t-shirt, so I'm not too worried about protecting from hypothermia. But if it was cold, this would be when I would insulate my patient from the ground, ensuring that I get those first steps towards securing his hypothermia. Yeah, these rocks are pretty cold. So if the rock is pretty cold, and he tells me that, I can get a little pad out of my backpack. And just this amount of insulation is really going to help us out a lot. Sir, I'm going to have you just scoot onto this pad. All right. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't want to get too distracted. I'm still on E. Remind yourself of where you are in your algorithm. Now I want to expose his foot. So, in general, we don't like to take shoes off in the backcountry because we have increased risk of frostbite. We also might cut the, cut his foot on some sort of twig or rock. So all I'm gonna do is just roll up his jean pant here and move down his sock. And what I can see is that there's no major bleeding. I can see that there's a bit of a deformity. I'm pretty worried about his ankle. So I've noted that I need to address this ankle at some point in time. But for me, at this point in my assessment, it's not an immediate life threat. So I want to get a better picture of everything that's going on. In the case of a trauma patient, I'd like to move straight from my primary assessment, which I just completed, my A, B, C, and D, and E, into a head-to-toe assessment. While I'm doing this head-to-toe assessment, I'm going to ask questions that I'm reminded by the piece of his body that I'm evaluating. 
So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now for you. So sir, I'm just going to go ahead and do what we call a head to toe assessment on you. Okay. Um, it's going to involve me using my hands to just feel to make sure that nothing else is hurt. Because sometimes if you have a, a really painful injury in your leg, uh, you might not sense some other injury in another part of your body. Oh, I see. All right. So I'm going to feel his head first. Just let me know if any of this hurts, okay? Did you hit your head? No. Uh, didn't Did you lose know. consciousness at all? No, I just came down on my foot. Okay. Yeah. And are you having any problems seeing? No. Any problems breathing? No. No swelling or anything inside your mouth? Uh-uh, no, no. Okay, yeah. so now I'm going to move down to his neck. Any pain there? No, uh-uh, no pain. And I'm just walking my fingers down his ver vertebrae one by one, feeling for any kind of deformity and listening for any sort of painful response. So now I want to check his shoulders. I'll just give a nice compression on each shoulder. When I go to evaluate his chest wall, I'm going to have him take a nice deep breath and apply a little bit of pressure okay. to see if there's any injuries to his ribs or his sternum. Sir, are you having any chest pain? No, that felt fine. So again, I'm using the body parts that I'm evaluating to remind me of good relevant questions. How about any trouble breathing? No, I can breathe all right. It's okay. my ankle. It's okay. My ankle. Yeah. And now I'm going to evaluate his abdomen. Uh, I'm going to palpate his abdomen. All four quadrants. Sir, do you mind if I look at your abdomen? No, no, no. Go so for we're it. just going to look yeah. to make sure we don't have any bruising. Looks like no bruising. That's great. Now I want to check for the integrity of his hips. Instead of rocking the hips, I'm just going to put my hands on his what we call iliac crests the hip bones more commonly, and press inward. I don't feel any instability, he doesn't report any pain. Now I'm going to move into his lower extremities. Sir, I'm just going to feel this injury, or sorry, this leg, and I want to be aware uh, don't go of where the lower. ankle is. See, he's already reminding me himself. So I'm not going to push too hard on that thing. Um, it's okay to feel just gently around to see if you feel any what we call crepitus. Uh, but the most important thing is to observe for any open fracture and any really significant swelling. So once I get down to the bottom of the leg, I want to check for PMS. Sir, can you wiggle your uh, toes inside your shoe? Yeah. yeah. Can you feel me tapping? Uh-huh. Yeah, but don't tap too hard. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to move over to the other leg. I can feel for a pulse here, ideally not through the sock. Can you feel me tapping? Yeah, yeah. And can you wiggle your toes inside there for me? Uh-huh. Great. The only thing I have left are his upper extremities. Feel for a pulse again. Can you squeeze my fingers? And can you feel me touching you? Uh-huh. No numbness or tingling? No. Mm -hmm. Same for the other side. Once I've done my head to toe, I've evaluated that all I have is really to deal with the ankle injury. I still want to not forget to get my vital signs and my patient history uh, to complete my exam. So I will go ahead and get a blood pressure if I have a blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope. I would like to get an accurate respiratory rate to ensure that he's not having any breathing problems. A heart rate is always a great thing to get right off the bat and reassess for a more accurate count. I also want to check his skin for temperature and color and moisture. Once I have all my vital signs, I can ask him my sample history and the OPQRST for that injury. So I'll start with my sample history. Um, so far, my signs are that he has an ankle injury to his left foot. Uh, he's complaining of pain, and I see a little bit of deformity along with some swelling. He's complaining of pain as well. About your allergies, sir, do you have any allergies to medications? No. Mm -hmm. How about any medications that you take regularly? Uh, I take Claritin for you know, seasonal allergies. Okay, so you take that for your seasonal allergies. Yeah. Is there anything you see a doctor regularly for? No. Mm -hmm. Any past medical history? No. No. Okay, so well, I had my appendix out a couple years ago. Appendix out a couple years ago, yeah. but no problems since then? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about your last oral intake? When did you eat or drink last? Oh, I have breakfast. I've been out here for quite a long time. Yeah. I'm, okay. You know, I, yeah, I've been out here for a while. Okay, so he's yeah. been out here for a while. Now I've been able to assess for a possibility of some dehydration. If I have some fluids, even warm fluids, uh, hopefully with a little bit of sugary substance in them, I would go ahead and administer those as well while I'm talking to the patient. 
How about um, what was going on with the day? Did you did you feel light at all before you you tripped and fell, or was it just that the the ground kind of gave way underneath your dress shoes? Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly what happened, man. Oh, it just slipped. Okay, but other than that, you've been feeling normal. Today. Yeah, no, I was on my way back down. I almost got to the tram. Okay, yeah. so now I got my sample history. I want to move into my OPQRST. So uh, when did this start, sir? Oh, about 45 minutes ago. 45 minutes I've been ago. Waiting you for found? a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and does anything make the pain better or worse? That's my P for provokes or palliates. Well, if I don't move it, it's it's better. Okay. And if I move it, it's worse. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so then I want to go ahead and into Q. Uh, that's the quality of the pain. So, sir, can you kind of describe the pain for me? It's it's sharp, painful. It's sharp, painful. Okay. Yeah. And R is for radiating. Does the pain move anywhere? Uh, if I move it, yeah, it goes up my leg. Moves, okay, it goes up your leg. And the severity on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being just a pinprick and 10 being you're about to pass out. Oh man, it's about a 6 or 7. A 6 or a 7, That's okay. And you said it's been going on for about 45 minutes. Yeah. Anything like happened. this ever happened to you before? No, mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. So I've gotten through the bulk of my history. Now it's time for me to just address uh, his, his ankle injury. For this patient, I failed to mention early on that I want to uh, determine my evacuation priority. For this guy, it was pretty obvious that he only had the ankle injury. He's not really a high priority patient. I can go ahead and evacuate in a reasonable amount of time uh, without putting us out here for too long to be, uh, to be exposed to the elements. So at this point, I would sprint, splint his ankle. Uh, if we were nice and close to the car, we could utilize a buddy carry. If I had a whole team and a litter set up, I might choose to do that as well. With any kind of extremity injury, we really want to make sure we don't stress that injury continuously or we could cause further harm. So I hope that was a, a nice example of an assessment for you guys. Uh, please feel free to ask us for additional information if you're unclear on this topic.